Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's September 15th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and this will wrap up our week. Uh, no chart lessons on Friday, so um, another big down day today. It, it, it really, this on the daily chart, this looks really bearish, and we did close extremely low, but it, we really had a range day early, and then we extended the range to a measured move before the day was over. So it had a lot of mixed trading back and forth. And we're probably going to see more of that even if we continue lower. We're probably going to see days where you get mixed trading. But it, again, we opened higher and closed much lower. But it wasn't as bearish as this made it seem to be here. Um, sure, we closed much lower than yesterday as well. So that's what really counts. But in the when you flip over and see, you'll see that we were up and down. And finally, we broke lower, and we pretty much moved a measured move equal to the original range that we had this morning. So let's flip over there, and we'll take a look at it. But you can see the daily chart, and you can see that we've traded. Uh, this is the after hours. We've already pushed lower again, and so far we've pushed through that EMA. It doesn't mean we're going to close below it. Uh, things could change considerably before now and tomorrow. Um, you can't go much off that early open part um, of the overnight session so but anyway let's flip over to the intraday the 2000 tick intraday chart and take a look at it and go through the trades and wrap this week up okay here's a look at it you can see the early range and then if you get the measured move that's here you can see we actually tried to go further if you look at this leg and look for a possible second leg down then you can see why prices were still pushing to go lower, trying to reach that target. Didn't quite make it, re rallied, and then right at the close, a lot of selling came in there. That's pretty interesting because usually right at the close, you don't see much movement at all. So uh, that's a really strong move there. So somebody did a good bit of selling right there into the close. And looks like maybe it even continued here into the open of the uh, overnight session but we pretty much made our measured move and we pretty much made it either way but i think you had two competing measured moves here kind of duking it out one would be the range and uh, prices wanted to go lower but kept struggling and finally bounced before heading lower again to breach this target right before the close and we didn't quite make it again well, maybe we did I zoom in there. Yeah, it looks like we did just... Nah, it's hard to tell because that's the clothesline there. So I'm not sure if we made it or not. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell by that. Uh, by the way the chart looks there. But again, there's a big level picture of it. And uh, we'll zoom in here and go through the trades. Okay, 7 o'clock comes just as we're kind of making this last, this little push down here, and then we bounce and turn back down, and, you know, it looks like a reversal there. Um, there's plenty of room to get out. The problem is you're not quite back to the EMA, but you can see this temporary trend line. Looks valid, but you don't have another touch in there, so it's really hard to confirm. So I think you're better just to sit tight and wait and see what you get. And I think we had some news come out in here, kind of set the market uh, a little haywire for a few minutes, and then uh, suddenly we were we get a close outside. Um, this one was really tempting, but you, you've got this channel working up, and you got this news item, and that's the first break, so it could easily turn for a new high, which it does. Although the the trade would have worked before it went higher, but you can't risk that. So again, I don't think you're, there's any trade there, but notice how prices run up here and we get the close outside, we make a new high, uh, and then suddenly you get a break higher here and turn down at a lower high. You could trade that on the engulfing bar. I'd probably wait for this to close. Close is very bearish. Just go short right there. You could drop a limit order in and see if you get a little better entry, which you could have, but sometimes these will take off and you'll miss the best trade. So... I don't recommend doing it. Of course, there's a failure right here, but you're so close to these 
this support and the lows, I just think again, wait on something better than that. And of course we drop down and we just get stuck down here, but notice how many times we bounced off these lows and then you get really a, a triple test here and you could argue that's a second entry, but doesn't really matter in that sideways stuff. But I like going long there. That's an easy scalp. Comes back down. There's a little trap right here, way away from the EMA. And it's not really, even though it's sideways, I wouldn't call that congestion. I think you're just finding support. I didn't mark this, but if you wanted to be aggressive, that's the kind of trade you'd probably take. Because it is a failed break below the lows. Uh, and the uh, overnight below the overnight low there and there's a long way back to the EMA and you do have people trapped right there so and you can see how it just shoots right straight up almost to the EMA before it backs up a little bit that was a nice move there you might get a runner there as well uh, and then we just start chopping sideways here I mark this one green because it's so close to this resistance here but there is a triple test there one two three it is a very strong signal bar the problem is there's no confirmed trend line here so you're kind of taking a shot in the dark uh, and you could easily get hung up in this resistance here but a triple test that also has a little bit of a trap there it's probably going to at least test these highs and that gives you enough room to get out uh, but usually I use the close the highs where you get the most touches with the closes to be safe it gives you a better uh, better opportunity to uh, know where the highs are likely to turn down again or at least close but you can see the last couple of times we pushed a little higher out of there so uh, maybe you take that trade I think you're better off to wait again um, but it's something to consider and then of course we run up and we're just chopping sideways again and then you get another one two three triple test with that little break lower and this time it breaks lower and turns up. Um, if you wait for this to close, I don't know if there's enough room there or not, but you you need enough room in there. Let's just look. Uh, you might take this on the engulfing, but it, it looks like there's just enough ticks there either way. So, And you could try a limit order, uh, although I don't know if you'd have got filled on it or not. And this turns out to be a pretty good trade. Runs up to a new high and then suddenly sells off. No real chance. There is a second entry short here. Notice the, uh, this makes a new low, but still that's two legs back. Uh, and it does break higher and turn down. The problem is, I don't know that you want to trade that on an engulfing bar. And if you wait till here, it's really pressing it. Um, again, I don't know if there's enough room to even get out there. Again, there's exactly six ticks, so and you could have tried a limit order. Um, so maybe you take that one too. At least mark it green. Oops, wrong direction. So maybe you take that trade, uh, and then we're just still chopping along here. I don't see anything I like. It breaks out, and you do have a little channel working up here. You get a close outside, move a couple of legs up to a new high and then it turns back down and you got plenty of room back to the test the breakout area in the EMA I like going short right there you don't know that it's going to take off like this but you figure you're going to get a scalp out of it and maybe go to the other side of the channel at a minimum and it did look like we were going to bounce there and then it breaks lower and just keeps going um, you get a close outside move to a considerable move and a couple of legs to a new low really just back to the other side of the range and then it fails um, you might take this I, this actually broke higher first and then turned back down and then went up I do believe that's the way it played out if I remember correctly and so it makes it hard to trade the engulfing bar and I don't know if you want to wait till here to go long again it would depend on do you have enough room back to the EMA and then what happens though is you get an inside bar and it doesn't even break higher so then you got to trade on the inside bar and we don't really want to trade those so there's just no there's no decent setup there this one is real tempting and it is right at right at the lows but we did push lower last time so it could continue a little lower before it fails and this is a good example of what happens no matter even on a failed breakout 
that's going to continue on, it usually will, or, or uh, let me back up and rephrase that. Even on a breakout that's going to continue on with the trend, it, it's usually going to fail, even if only temporary. And you can see this one failed. It was only temporary, but it still failed and gave you a chance back into the range before it, it finally turned lower. Um, and so if that one would have broke lower and turned up, maybe you trade that. I just think it's risky right there. I think you need a higher low or reversal or something, and you don't get anything like that. And then the next thing you know, we're chopping sideways. We did try to go higher three times. Too bad you don't get a good signal bar there to catch that short. But that's the way it works sometimes. And you do get a lower high here. Uh, again, not much room to the lows. Looks a little sideways. There's three bars there. Two of them are dojis, no bodies really. It's just a risky setup. And this turns out to be a really good move, but we just don't get a chance to enter it. And there is a little short-term trend line there. I don't have it on there. I think it starts right about there, like so. And you can see that. And you get your break, a new couple legs to a new low, and it's kind of chopping sideways and turns back up. Here's another one that's tempting. It did try to go higher three times, and it is a first entry, second entry, third entry, though. So that's the problem with it. It's a third entry. It looks a little sideways. We did try to go higher there three times, though, and you get a very bearish bar. So the key would be, do I have enough room to get out? And you got a double bottom there with only a couple of ticks or so. So I just don't think that's worth taking. I think you have to look at that as a little congestion area and skip it and you can see that and we actually this actually continues on over and we do break out there and there's a second entry now look you got a little channel working up you get a break move to a new high so that's a, and that's a second entry plenty of room back here to test the breakout um, it tries to go higher once, and if it tried to go higher again there and turned down, maybe you go short right there. Uh, but I don't think you can go short right into that EMA and that resistance right there that, that's now acting as support three previous bars. It would have worked, but you but you just, you can't risk it. And the next thing you know, we're kind of bottoming out. Now you got your break of your yellow channel here, move to a new low. And here you do get a new, a higher low. Really, you got a double bottom here with a little trap, and then you get a higher low on top of that. And uh, it's a fairly small signal bar, maybe eight ticks, yeah. And so I like going long there. And that turns out to be a nice trade. You probably get a runner on that, and this is what you're... And hopefully we're going back to the range at minimum to test the breakout because we haven't come back and tested it yet. Look where we came through, and we have yet to test it. Uh, we still don't quite get there, but we tried. You can see how long they tried to test, retest that before it sells off again. But the market's just too too weak. So, uh, again, I don't see any reason. You do get a close outside. You get an overshoot on this one first, and you get a close outside the new high anyway. Uh, lower high right here, but look at all that support. Same thing here. You get another turn off the high, but right into support. And... You try to notice this though, you make this high, you try to go higher once, then you try to go higher twice, it breaks higher, and you get to end up with this big bearish bar. I like going short there. Yeah, it's close to that last low, but uh, markets tried to go higher that many times, it's going lower, and I like going short right there. Um, it's basically a failure. And you tested the lower side of this one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Now that's a lot of tests. Now you might have actually, I don't think I'd play this on the engulfing bar. I think you have to wait to here. And you might let it break lower and drop a limit order back up where it was below this bar. And notice it does come back and it would have filled that and then dropped lower. And if you played it that way, it's possible you could have got a runner. I don't know. It just depends on where your entry was and what kind of entry you got. 
but it would have been nice if you could catch this big move all the way down. Uh, but you get another chance to still get some more of this. Notice you get a two-legged correction. You get a second entry right there. Uh, and that's the first break of that yellow channel. And so uh, I like going short there. And if you're not sure about that one, just wait. You don't get a lower high, but you get the reversal. Of course, that's a little more advanced, so you got to... You know, that's not for that's that's not for most new traders. But either one of them is a nice trade. You get a scalp, maybe a little more out of it. And then we're reversing here. I don't see any reversal that I would like. It's you would expect prices to try to go higher here if this is going going to be a failed breakout. But we could be headed to the a measured move. So it's really really hard. To know what price and you can see how confused nobody really knows what's going on and there's no clear direction until finally it, it finds some direction here and um, so maybe you take this high or low right here technically you could almost call that a second entry but it does kind of peak up and back down here so by the counts it would not be a second entry but that's clearly two legs over back to the EMA or whatever. It's the first break of this green channel as well. Um, so uh, the key is, do you have enough room to get out for those highs, which you do? And ends up not matter. This is a big move, big, huge move. And then we're just like usual. We start working sideways again and you get this one, two, three, triple test. It actually breaks lower and turns up. You could trade that on the engulfing bar. You probably want to wait till that closes and just go along there. Still plenty of room. There's a, a higher low here, but you can't go long right into that resistance. So just skip that. And again, we, we run up and just start chopping sideways again. Once again, there's another triple test here, but you can't go long right into those highs. And you see it fails instantly on the breakout. You try to go higher once twice and so that's a failure uh, right at the EMA decent signal bar of course on a failure you don't really care sometimes the more bullish the better because it traps more people uh, but I like that trade and, and now we're headed lower to at least come back and test the breakout area if we're going to go higher or not and you can see we get back inside the range here uh, there's another second entry right here uh, if, if this would have been the signal bar, I'd, as bearish as that is, I'd say take that trade. But technically, this is your signal bar, and that's an inside bar. It is the first break of a pretty strong trend there. But it could easily tick lower and go up one more time and then come back and get you. And that's the problem there. And there is somewhat of a little range working up here. And that's the other thing is, is you see... You can't really say, hey, there's a clear close outside and a new high. So you're taking a chance going short there. Of course, it drops down like a rock. And uh, then we bounce a couple of eggs up here. This one's tempting. And if you took this one, I, I didn't mark it. But if you took this trade, you've already got a break in new low. But sometimes you'll get another leg. But the key here is... There's your trend working up. And notice you get a clear break and move to a new high. And you're a little ways away from the EMA. So it's probably going to at least come back to the EMA. Uh, the problem is you might have a bigger green channel, but it's not confirmed or anything. So you may take that trade. I didn't mark it. It's a little, it's a little iffy. But there's reasons to say, hey, that's worth taking. And if you took it, it's a little bit aggressive, but... Uh, you know, I wouldn't have a problem if you say, hey, I, I wanted to take an aggressive trade. But now you got a clear trade move outside and a second entry long. So it's kind of the same thing all over again. But we're also swinging back and forth above and below the EMA. So this thing could come back to the EMA and go higher one more time. And it didn't quite make the retest. But that might be because my line's off there a tick or so. So... And usually I want to see it retest that at least twice uh, before I'm going to assume it's going to hold or either get a trend going the other direction, some kind of trap or something. And you don't have that there. So, I mean, 
it's just if it was a really bearish bar i'd say i mean you see how bearish that is but this looks more it closes probably in this lower third but it, it's not ideal because it looks too much like a doji so there's a lot of mixed trading in there so i just don't like that one for that reason i, I mean they're real close and you could argue i mean if you could argue this one then you could argue this one so anyway um just something to think about I, again i'd say skip that one and hopefully you understand why i like that one a little bit better but uh we tried notice how we dropped first entry dropped again second entry right into the ema so when it breaks lower there you got a failure take that trade and now we started lower again towards our measured move uh, we bounce here there's another second entry right here notice the low first entry second entry but the signal bar is no good uh, and then we try to go higher once twice and you actually have another first entry second entry when it breaks lower right there so uh, i like going short right there and you, you would assume now we're probably going to at least make a measured move or try and we're just heading down. And you can see once we get down here, then the trading gets really mixed into 230. And just not much not much else going on there. So uh, I don't see anything else here that I would I would risk taking. So again, a lot of mixed trading with a big overall bearish bearish for the most part hanging over the market bearish uh, slant hanging over the market here for the most part so anyway uh it's thursday and the last couple of videos the last couple of days have been 30 minutes or more and so we're headed over 20 minutes now so i'm not going to beat around the bush i'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for the day and wrap up our week and uh, we'll be back to do it monday but i'm done for today hope you have a great weekend hope you've had a good trading week I'll see you Monday. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.